Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. After Jesus is baptized, he's led uh, to the wilderness where Luke 4 tells us that he's tempted by the devil for 40 days. You might be familiar with the temptations that Jesus is presented with, but I want to focus on uh, one verse there in Luke chapter 4, and that's, that's verse 13. Luke chapter 4 verse 13 says this, Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. You know, we, a lot of times we read the account of the temptations that, that Satan put in front of Jesus, and we think, well, that was, that was it. That's when Jesus was tempted. Uh, but this kind of tells us that Satan probably came back and tempted him other times too. But if you think about this time specifically, for 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus is alone. We're told that for 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus ate nothing. And probably he wasn't sleeping well in the wilderness either. And the devil thought that because of those factors, this would be the opportune time to lure, lure Jesus into making bad decisions. The devil saw an opportunity where Jesus would weak and he could really make the Son of God look bad. Of course, Jesus using Scripture was able to overcome each temptation. But what does that tell us about our opponent? You know, successful football teams, successful uh, basketball teams, they watch a lot of film on their opponents. Uh, baseball pitchers, they study hours and hours of film uh, watching hitters to know their strengths and the, and the areas in the strike zone they need to stay away from, but also finding out their vulnerabilities. Hitters study, study pitchers looking for any advantage they can get. And Satan has been studying human beings for 6,000 years now, learning our weaknesses, learning our vulnerabilities. And is it any surprise that he attacks Jesus when Jesus is in a weakened state? The devil is looking for opportunities. He's looking for opportunities where you're weak so that he can devour you. In fact, 1 Peter 5, 8 says just that. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Have you ever watched lions, maybe on National Geographic or something, uh, attack a herd of wildebeest? Which one does the lion get? He gets the weakest one. He gets the slowest one. He gets the one who's at the back of the pack failing. That is who the lion devours. Jesus in this situation is weak. He's hungry. He's lonely. He's tired. And the lion, the devil, thinks he sees weakness and he pounces. How many of us make the best decisions when we are hungry, lonely, or tired? How about when we're anxious, afraid, or angry? Believe me, the devil sees us in those situations and he cannot wait to separate us from the herd. Right now, a lot of us are in heightened states emotionally. Uh, many of us haven't seen friends or loved ones in a long time and, and there's a sense of loneliness that comes with that. Many of us aren't getting the sleep that we're accustomed to. Many of us are dealing with heightened anxieties and some even anger. Anger at people who uh, are taking the pandemic way too serious or anger that people, uh, that people aren't taking it seriously enough. Be careful. The devil sees this and in these situations, he will pounce. Then how do we stay strong? The, the, the easy answer is, is don't get hungry, lonely, or tired, right? But we still find ourselves in those situations a lot, and sometimes by no fault of our own. So then what? What do we do when we're weak? How do we keep the devil at bay? Jesus, even in his weakened state, he's able to fend off every temptation by quoting the word of God. The psalmist says, Thy word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you devoting ourselves to Scripture every day is like a good team watching game film. 
to prepare for battle. In fact, Ephesians chapter 6, Paul talks about taking up the shield of faith uh, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. In Romans 10, 17, we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The more we hear God's word, the more it shields us from Satan's attacks. But let me mention one more thing about the devil. John 8, verse 44 tells us that not only is the devil a liar, but he's the father of all lies. And that makes sense because the name devil literally means slanderer. Generally, we think of a slanderer as someone who slanders someone else. Maybe someone comes to you and, and tells you a lie about your neighbor. That's slander. Do you know who the devil is slandering? He's slandering you and he's slandering me. And do you know who he's slandering us to? He's slandering us to ourselves. When he whispers and he tells us, when he whispers and he tells me, you can't make it. Uh, you are the weak one. I'm going to devour you. I'm going to get you. You're not a good person. God doesn't love you. No one is going to forgive you after what you've done. And he lies and he lies and he lies. And Jesus told that liar in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, Get behind me, Satan. And the devil left. And angels came and they ministered to Jesus. Even Jesus needed to be ministered to. John 4, verse 7 says, Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And that is exactly what Jesus did. He resisted the devil and off he went. The same thing can happen for us. You know, I know some of you are having really hard times right now. And the devil is attacking you and you feel weak. And the devil is lying to you and telling you that you can't make it. Friends, let me, let me encourage you to do a few things. First, spend time in the Word. Spend time in the Word every day. Let me challenge you to, to take 15 minutes. If you're not already doing more, take 15 minutes every day and read something from the Bible. And, and do, that for, do that for three days. And if in three days uh, something's not working, then, then up at the 30 minutes or 45 minutes. I guarantee you the more time we spend in the Word, the better our days are going to get. Spend time in the Word. Resist the devil. And let me challenge you to do something that may be harder than that. When you're hungry, when you're lonely, when you're tired, when you're lost, when you're confused, when you're scared, let your church family minister to you. I love you. Have a great day.